To introduce our final team, please welcome the Los Titans. Uh, welcome to all. Uh, I'd like to uh, give congratulations to this year's inductees. I'm uh, also very, uh, very happy for Joe and Gladwin for all his support through the years. Uh, all of us in the baseball world uh, got a lot out of Gladwin. So uh, we're going to do something a little different here, but we'll be timely. Uh, uh, we're going to introduce a team. Uh, Amy is our scorekeeper for uh, and PA announcer and wrestling for all the time in MSBL. So I'd like to call on Amy Tychus, please. For years, I introduced this next group of men, and it always started with "Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tychus Field." Well, tonight it's "Good evening, ladies and gentlemen," and let's welcome the rest and Rockets to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Starting off with Murray Anderson, executive. Number 20, Tyson Anderson, first base and designated hitter. Number 7, Brett Braybrook, outfield, outfielder and excellent defender. Number 14, Clayton Jago, third base and also played in the rest of the Rocket system for over three decades. Number 10, Jeff Kachmar, pitcher, outfielder and MSBL All-Star. Number 34, Des Coop, the Rockets' bullpen for all of their seasons, including one game where he pitched in 13 of 20 regular season games. Number 20, Andrew Lougheed, utility, excellent hitter and defender, and MSBL All-Star. Richard Lougheed, executive. Number nine, Buddy Mayer, center field, perennial All-Star, a spark plug and always had good speed. Number eight, Alexander McKinnon, true utility player. He played every position except Ross never did let him pitch. He was also an MSBL All-Star. Ian Milliken, executive. Number two, Cole Olson, outfield. Came up with some key hits. Number 26, Mitch Olson, third base, first base, pitcher, two-time AAA Senior Player of the Year and perennial All-Star. Number eight, Brody Pinkerton, right-handed pitcher, and he pitched a lot of innings for the Rockets. Number 12, Zane Sawyer, right-handed pitcher and utility. He was a key starter in the 2012 and 2013 seasons. Number 25, Aaron Teichels, first base and DH, a left-handed hitter who could deliver key hits and at-bats. Myself, Amy Teichels, announcer and scorekeeper for all of the Rockets years in the MSPL. Number 21, Rory Teichels, catcher, third base, first base, a clutch hitter, senior AAA player of the year, and perennial all-star. And last but not least of those here tonight, number 44, Ross Teichels, coach, manager, the leader of the Rockets, and senior AAA coach of the year for the MSBL. Not in attendance this evening, number 35, Tyler Henderson, number 22, Drew Hate, number 24, Josh Martin, number 6, Sheldon Moore, number 19, Corey Neer, number 15, Eric Truscott. Those are the players who have requested trophies, but there were many more Rockets. And of course, our bad boys, John and Billy Patmore. Thank you. Hold on. Thanks, Amy. Uh, congratulations, guys. It's, uh, it's, it's an honor to be up here with you. It was great years, and uh, you deserve this, this honor. So congratulations, boys. Our team started in 2007 and required a lot of help from our community to make it a successful franchise. I'd like to thank the executive members up here tonight, Murray, Ian, Richard, and the late Nancy and Grant Chiltroff for the support. Every town needs people like this that were always there for us. Also, Amy for the work that she did. And I know one game that someone said, well, who's doing that? Well, she was doing the score and announcing. She was counting money in the 50-50s and 
every game there was a program, so uh, thanks, Amy. Um, we had a very committed group of players. Uh, we, were, we often ran a roster of only 13 or 14 uh, players. Having a bunch was no good. You always had to figure it out. They always showed up. We had a core seven players who played all the eight years in the MSBL. And it was a big commitment. Uh, in the end, when we, re we, we disbanded, I guess, a lot of these guys were from Deloraine, Vern, around the area, and our local guys moved away. So we kind of let it go. It was a great time, but all of these guys went on, and every one of them is a coach. Every one of them works in their community, and it's what baseball is. They're giving back, and I'm really very proud of all of you guys for what you put back into where you are. So congratulations on that. I'm, I know the MSBL today, or in the, at the end, we relied a lot on imports. We were very fortunate to have uh, four imports that played three years for us. One of them was uh, Chris Young, a catcher who was an all-star and MVP. We had a couple of left-handed pitchers, Ryan Waddell and Corey Neer, and Cole Stover, an all-star, who was a, a very good right-handed pitcher. Uh, the good thing about that is they wanted to come back. This is a good group of guys, and they wanted to put a lot into it, so it was fun. We had a great time. Um, I would now ask Aaron to bring forward a response from the players. Aaron Teichels. Thanks, Ross. Uh, first of all, we'd like to start as a group by congratulating all the other inductees uh, and to say that we're incredibly humbled and honored to be recognized with some of the best teams in the history of this province. In talking to some of the players, the, there was two main points a lot of them talked about. The first of it, which was we really were a family. And for any of you that had to sit over there on that side of the room and listen to us back there, that was a mistake putting us in that room because we just started talking like it was 2009. So um, in 2006, our senior AA team in Reston was at a crossroads. Uh, we had a lot of players that had been playing in the MSBL and Reston at the same time. They were coming to the age that they had to make a decision. Uh, about whether to stay or whether to go. We also had a couple of guys that really wanted to try playing in the Manitoba Senior League. So, you know, f it was, uh, it started with a conversation dad and I had in the basement. Uh, it was a couple of beers on a Friday night after a game. I, don't, I can't remember if it was Lyleton or Waskater or somebody at that time that we were playing in the Southwest against. Uh, about why couldn't we be like Bertle or Killarney or Balder or one of those teams that was a really good double A team that moved into triple A. It took a couple of beer and a, a long conversation, and one of the things that he said to me was, we'll do it, but we'll only do it if our players were all committed to do it together. And we brought that team into the league. We were lucky that Rory was in college and Dad had, had involvement in the, in the provincial team, so we were able to find players. It also didn't hurt that a lot of the guys that Dad had coached on the provincial team loved playing for him and were easy to convince to come play. It was young players like Andrew Lougheed, Mitch Olson, Xander McKinnon, and Eric Truscott that came in uh, from playing on provincial teams to help round out our core. Well, a guy like Des Coop, who had been a, uh, an opponent, who had been a teammate of AA All-Stars and had been, always been a provincial pickup for us in AA to become a full-time Rocket. What happened next was awesome. The eight years we spent in the MSPL will never be forgotten. But to be completely honest, it was more than just baseball. Unfortunately, most of the stories from the diamond involve the occasional ejection, the occasional fight, and some colorful language that's not suitable for a situation like a banquet. Um, it involved two trips to Kenosi Lake to a tournament that included Jeff Katchmar putting on an absolute show in a home run derby against a kid get from Saskatchewan that has caused people to still not want to play golf at Kenosi Lake anymore. It was van nights uh, and trips to the road games. It was sitting in the musty old basement of the Reston Rink, which seemed like forever telling stories, having the occasional pop, and wishing time would stand still. It was in that dress room that every American, every import, and every new player became part of our family. 
our core group grew together. A lot of the imports came back for multiple years, as Ross had mentioned. Unfortunately, we had to learn how to lose before we learned how to win. I think most of us will agree that the 2010 team that we put on the field might have been the best team that we had. Um, we had seven guys as first team All-Stars in the MSPL that year, uh, but things just never went right right from game one of the finals and we lost to the Cloverleafs yet again. Uh, things came together in 2011. The calmness of guys in the room like Mitch and Trusty balanced out the intensity of guys like Buddy and Rory and myself. And there was a belief from the start of that season that we had a chance. But I will say, as much as the calmness balanced some of the intensity, I think we brought some intensity out of those guys as what happened in the middle of game four of the 2011 MSBL finals when Trusty uh, had the wires crossed for a second would uh, indicate. Fittingly enough, uh, we won our first MSBL championship on dad's birthday on August 14, 2011 on the slowest developing 6-4-3 double play in the history of baseball. The second thing we talk about is the community of Reston. For those of you who don't know where Reston is, we're about 10 minutes from the Saskatchewan border, a half an hour from the U.S. border, and we claim that there's 700 people that live in Reston. The 2021 census disagreed, it says it's only 659, but we all think they're lying. We always had a ton of fans and support at every game. There were a lot of guys that Buddy Rory and I grew up watching playing with Dad that were there. Oftentimes, and the Brandon teams loved when Reston was playing them because attendance definitely got a boost. They embraced our core group, and as our, as our group included guys from Verdon and Deloraine, there were people in those communities that also supported us and were there along the way. They became passionate about our group. A lot of those people are here today, and we appreciate your support as always, and we thank you very much. You helped us get to Nationals twice through the support of fundraising efforts we went to St. John's, Newfoundland, and Prince George, BC, and none of our players ever had to pay a dime out of pocket. With the exception of a couple guys who spent way too much on flags at a golf tournament in 2014. The 2013 season really showed what our community and our family meant. Our community was hit with a massive overland flood. Our leader, Ross, as the municipality leader at that time, was left to deal with it. We played seven games in 10 days to end the season. Had to play home games in Deloraine because our field was underwater. We had a tough year in the field that year. We lost a lot of one-run games. And we, didn't real, we, didn't, we knew we weren't as bad as the fourth place team that we were. And for our core group, we really didn't think that that was how it was going to end. We kept grinding. We beat Oak River in the Survivor Series. We got down 2-1 to one in the semifinals to the Brandon Marlins before coming back and winning Game 5 at Andrews Field and Brandon won nothing, beating a former teammate to do so. We found ourselves trailing 3-1 to the Meekwad League Finals following a tough extra inning loss, but we never stopped. And that season came to end on the highest and the longest pop-up in the history of baseball that landed in Mitch Olson's glove in the Game 7 win. It was the young guys who were on the field, on the bench, watching in 2011 and made huge impacts in those playoff runs as they became big members of our family. Cole Olson stabilized the defense in the outfield, and Zane Sawyer won big games for us and came up with clutch hits. <clears throat> when I first moved to Rivers, I was sitting in the beer gardens at a hockey game one time, and I had a person ask me if playing in the MSPL was worth it. Every second with this group was worth it. Here's what the MSPL meant to us. A town of 700 people in southwestern Manitoba sent a team to Nationals twice. We beat BC twice, we walked off Ontario, and we were right there with the best teams in Canada. Our core group that played our first game together in Equal in 2007 played our last group game together in St. John's, Newfoundland in 2014. And in between, we became lifelong friends. The legacy of our core group, we not only learned a love for the game, but we continue to, as Ross mentioned, try to impact the game and are doing great things in communities such as Deloraine, Rivers, Cartwright, Killarney, Brandon, Thompson, Winnipeg, and Verdon. 
either coaching or sitting on boards. We have a guy even this weekend trying to win a state championship in high school in Fargo, North Dakota. I also don't think there's been a senior double-A championship that's been played since we folded, that there hasn't been a restaurant at either there or making an impact. The legacy of the rest of the Rockets starts and ends with one man. Rory, Amy, and I have been lucky enough to call him dad our whole lives. But he has been a second father to a lot of the guys standing on the stage with me tonight. He helped us all love the game that we already did. And I know that's why a lot of us coach, manage, sit on boards and do this. I think we all do things for the same reason that we hope that our kids and the kids that we coach are lucky enough to someday get to play with a group of guys that we played with for eight years. As a group, we want to thank Ross Titles for not only getting us into the MSPL, for keeping our team together, but helping us get here today. Thank you to the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame and everybody that's here tonight to celebrate the greatest game in the world. Thank you.